talk about it, a community talk show where we focus on issues affecting our community and much more. I'm your host Sheree and I'm here in Charlotte, North Carolina with this dynamic couple, Lisa McLeaden and Pastor Maurice Brailsford. Welcome you guys thank to you. the show. Thank you. <laughs> well first I'd like to thank you for taking the time out to sit and talk with me a little bit and talk about some of the things that you guys got coming up and have been doing um, in the past. So we're going to jump right into it. Yes. Okay, aside from being an international gospel recorder artist and a pastor and an author of your new book, who is Lisa Memories? <laughs> it's the hardest. I, 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 I've been doing this for 12 years professionally. That's still the hardest question. <laughs> really? To, every time somebody asks me, I'm like, you should know that you've been next to me. Well, everything you say, that's who we are. Um, but in addition to that, we're parents. Okay. Um, so ten children, believe it or not, we have wow. ten kids. Um, people always say, huh? But wow. um, Maurice had eight kids with his first okay. and wife. <laughs> and and I had two um, for my first um, marriage. But um Okay. Love people, love kids. Okay. I mean, as you can tell. <laughs> uh, just love to have fun. Always trying to find a way. We still trying to find a way to have more fun. Right. So I just want to just want to take full advantage of life. I'm I'm really artsy. Okay. Um, very creative. I love to create. Love to come up with stuff. Okay. So and then some. At times I like to be in myself because I love to think. Okay. And stuff like that. But you know that's what things that people don't know about me. Right. And I would say uh, I think Dennis. Green said this on football. He says, they are who we thought they were <laughs> when Arizona, when Arizona yeah. got beat by, yeah. the, by actually, when Arizona <laughs> you got beat by the Bears back in the oh, wow. So we are who, <laughs> right. you know, we're uh, definitely, like uh, Lisa said, parents, um, love God, Amen. Um, have to deal with things just like everybody else do, right. Right. and um, depend on God like everybody else right. do. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Right, because it's, it's so crazy because you said that, well it's not crazy that you said that, but it's good. Because some people think that because, you know, you become of Christ, that you're still not going to be tested and tried mm -hmm. with certain things. And that you're going to have this happy, happy, you know, productive life. You're still going to go through some things, yeah, but I mean, with says, God, you'll be able right. to go through. And he says, you know? many are the afflictions of the righteous, right. but our God will deliver them. Amen. Amen. Well, that's just... We have to go through it so God can show Himself strong. So that's mm -hmm. just a part of life, whether you're saved or not. I don't know if people think. They, mm -hmm. I hear people say this. Well, man, ever since I got saved, everything been crazy. No, it was crazy before right. <laughs> with no hope. Right. And then you got hope. Amen. Right? So Amen. That's, that's, that's the difference. difference. That's the difference. Okay, we're gonna jump right into your music. So yes. tell me, this you're working on your sixth album. I'm working on my sixth album, Invisible. Okay, um, tell me about that. Um, we are setting to release it. I know this is a weird day, but I just thought like it would be a good day. But I'm thinking of really it will be released November of this year, 2012. I'm looking to release it the day after Thanksgiving. I've been really okay. thinking that's going to be a good day to release it. Right. Um, but right now we are pushing, pushing, pushing the single um, "Rock Star" right. based on Psalms 95. Okay. Know, it says that He's the Rock of our salvation, and that song just pretty much came about because um, just as a as an artist who happens to be a Christian. Um, I just see where image is driven more than the message, and not, not everybody, not everybody, but it's really just people are just, we, we feel like we're in competition with the world, and even I've been there, even I've been there, we got to do with the world, the women, and this just, just, I just don't believe that anymore. So this song, with this particular single, okay. I just wanted to do a song that put the focus back on who's the real rock star. Okay. While everybody's trying to be seen, while everybody's trying to be famous, while everybody's trying to get right on the show, we got to remember who is the real rock star. And when we got that foundation, everything else will be balanced. Amen. Rock star Jesus. <laughs> None of this. It's going to go like this. <laughs> all right, all right. Wow. Okay. All right. So let's talk about, you also have a girls foundation? Yes. My Which heart, is very my heartbeat. heartbeat. Oh my, something I love, something I love just as much, if not more, than singing. Um, but the name of the organization is called Girls Life. Okay. Um, our website is girlsliveworld.com. Um, it is a mentoring program. Um, it started off as a 
community-wide slumber party that we put together and we invited girls from the Charlotte, area, Charlotte and surrounding areas. Okay. We take this program to empower girls and our goal with Girls Life is to teach girls um, how to own the decisions that they make, which right. is funny because I just thought about this. <laughs> My husband and I, wow, just had this conversation about our daughter. Okay. That's, that just hit me. But that's yeah. what we do. Right. Um, we have volunteers um, that are trained. We're really particular about people coming in and volunteering because we want to change these girls' lives. Right. A lot of these girls come in with attitudes. Right. And we have we understand that the attitude comes from some place. Right. So what we do is we talk about a different a variety of things. We we come in diff three different forms. Of course, our very popular summer party, we do. Um, we come in and we do summer parties, and it's, it features the Rock the Runway session. We have a live DJ, wow. the little while the girls have food, movie, popcorn, everything, a whole night of fun. Uh, we also do what we call the um, Pillow Talk session, mm -hmm. and that's when we just come in and we have a talk session with girls based on whatever topic we brought, they brought us in to do. Wow. And or we also do, the third thing is called our Child and Chat. Okay. And that is a pillow talk with food. That's all. <laughs> so we provide, okay. um, the host provide lunch and we meet at a restaurant and we yeah. have powwows with the girl. So right now, currently, we've been blessed to partner with the YMCA that is beautiful. here in Charlotte. And we're doing an eight-week mentoring um, session with the girls. It's been okay. wonderful. We talk about sex. We right. talk about the overload of the internet, yeah. social media. Um, this week coming, we're talking about Material Girl, the okay. finding the balance and trying to keep up with the trends. Right. What links will you go to be cute? You know, stuff like that. But just teaching girls beautiful. how to, giving them a, a safe place right. to talk. Right. And making sure awesome. they lead with solutions. I, I'm going to put the link in them so they, the link yes. in the um, video as yes. well. So and we do travel. We do right. travel. We've been all over. And that's good. We actually, we need one in every state and every city. And we will. You know, we will. We, we will. really will. Because mm -hmm. a lot of, you know, the churches, they don't really get dig in, in, in deep with the youth. Yes. They just top the surface. But you have to get in because yes. if you don't teach them, who else will? Who will? And that's the thing. And that's how we, it's so important because I always think about the book of Titus when it says that the elder women shall teach the younger. Right. But the elder women are becoming extinct. Right. Extinct, you know, they're, they're, they're too busy. They're becoming the younger women. Because they want to be, they, they're competing right. with the younger girls. Right. You got grown women, <laughs> grown women oh, yeah. fighting over <laughs> dudes with right. these young girls. You should be teaching them. So exactly. we are definitely raising up a generation of women that are going to reach back and save our girls. Amen. With a real role model, please stand up. Yep. Oh, please stand up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and back to the music. You also grace the stage with a couple of um, other gospel artists. Yes. Um, I've toured with Freya Hang. I'm his friend. Freya Hang, awesome. Hi, Freya. I've toured with Byron Cage. Um, awesome. Man, this was a long, you know. <laughs> but I've, I've had an opportunity to tour with some amazing people. I've learned a lot. Um, I've learned a whole lot in my 12 years of being um, doing what I do musically. Um, and now I'm, I'm just continuing to do what God has anointed me to do. Amen. You know, um, and everybody has their own call and their own goal. And I, and I just, I learned, one thing I have learned, especially when being on, when I was on the um, Evolution Tour, the, um, what was really phenomenal was um, Revolution Tour. Was it Evolution? I think it was Evolution Tour. Mm -hmm. um, what, was really, what was really amazing was because we had so many diverse artists from okay. Tony um, at that time and um, to Virtue, to Byron Cage. You know, so it's just like to have all these wide spectrums and see everybody have their own call. Right. And everybody everybody represent what they their own style, which right. is say well. So many different styles of gospel. So it's just it's just great to um to just do what I do and be embraced for what I do. Because right. I'm not I'm not necessarily a traditional gospel artist. Okay. Um and I'm not country. Right. You know <laughs> I'm not really rock, I'm not a rapper, but I'm a neo soul and it's okay. been embraced very well. Okay. We're going to you, Mr. Pastor yeah, Maurice. Yeah, I, 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 you're motivated. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. So let's talk about your book, which as well as you being a motivational speaker, let us know the title and what um, inspired you to create that book. Well, it's called How to Love Your Spouse's Lover. Okay. Um, a Story of Forgiveness. A Story of Forgiveness. Because <laughs> when I say that in pause, people are like, right. what? I know, right? What you mean love my spouse? I can't even love my spouse right now. You know, so... Um, <laughs> It's about my life. Um, great book. Um, it has blessed people all over the world. Um, wow. We've seen someone that was going to kill somebody that read the book in a matter of the time that we right. was ministering. Um, and when we came back out to the product table, she had already read it and was crying and started seeing how right. she was just going to, you know, 
she was going to kill someone and um, literally had everything planned, but wow. the book inspired her. Um, yeah. People have read the book and can't put it down. Pretty but it was just sure. about my life, uh, getting married at a young age, 17, okay. Okay. Um, to my first wife, not okay. Lisa, my first wife. Right. And, um, you know, football and everything gave up a lot of things that, yeah. as a young teenager to get married. I had eight kids and, yeah. and one day um, after, you know, doing a lot of things for my family, and really, you know, letting go of my career and things like that, with, you know, playing ball. Okay. Um, and I, she had left me for someone else. Mm -hmm. And um, me and eight kids and did that divorce and all of that stuff that really you know, took my life. Um, to one day, um, my little brother, he said, you know, you've always taught us how to do what's right. You know, in my outreach ministry, Christ Life yeah. Flavor. What's up, y'all? Jay Ville, y'all know the deal. Um, and so he told me, he says, he said, Big Brother, you can either, you know, go after him or whatever and uh, okay. hurt him or he hurt you right. or or you can forgive him, become a legend. Right. And when I went home, that stuck with me. And Jesus showed me literally a vision of how he was beaten. He was his beard. You see this big old beard, but it was <laughs> plucked out. And his eyes was beat about half out. And, how they stripped him and they beat him and hung him. Right. And he said, Father, forgive him. Mm -hmm. And then he showed me Stephen in the book of Acts how they were stoning him. And the Ooh, Bible says, get me tearing yeah, already. It yeah, is so powerful. Yeah, and the Bible says how he says, lay this not to their charge. Right. And the, he says, he's seen the Lord standing on the right hand side of the Father. Now in the Bible we read he's always seated. But that's the only place in the Bible that he was standing. And I believe the right. revelation he gave me was because he was doing the same thing 40 years before that happened. Jesus was doing that same thing. Forgive him. Yeah. And then he says, son, there's more people that's going to die and go to hell uh, for unforgiveness than any other sin or disobedience. We look at it. Don't go to the club. Don't be drinking. Don't be messing around. Mm -hmm. We look at all of that. Mm -hmm. But then there's people in our lives that we can't forgive right. because they hurt us. They did this. They did that. So they true. left my mama when I was old. So my young day. So... All over the world, including even London, we went, and the, the altar was packed of people that just couldn't forgive. Orlando, wow. young kids <laughs> crying. I mean, it's not not the nose crying right. because they couldn't forgive their father that left right. them. And uh, and so that book is a but it's even a blessing in our home because you know our marriages, first marriages, ended in a divorce, and, yeah. and our kids are a part of all of that of us teaching yeah. them. How to, you know, they don't know, you know, all the things that happen and teaching them how to forgive and release and let go. Right. So it's not only working for people in the, in the outside of the world, it's working for our family. Wow. That is beautiful. <laughs> I'm so get, get that book. It. Yes. MauriceBrailsford.com. Yes. Because people don't know how important it is and how it takes a toll on yourself. Yeah. Physically and spiritually. When yeah. you don't, when you don't forgive someone, what you say? Yeah. It's like drinking poison. If I right. like, I couldn't forgive you, right. but I'm drinking poison, waiting on you to die. Right. It's only killing me. Exactly. And if you look at uh, really the, the medical statistics, a lot of people with cancer and all of these things, the Bible says, whether there's bitterness, envy, strife, every evil work worketh in that. Amen. So that means everything they will come in your Amen. house and just destroy you. Amen. Wow. Forgiveness is not really for the other person, but really for That's yourself. Right. That's right. Uh, so let's talk about this ministry, which you guys are both pastors. You're right. a pastor as well. I is a pastor. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> wow, awesome. So tell me how that came together. How did you guys come come together? Well, I, I just saw one day. Yeah, I just saw one day. I said, one day, I said girl, come over here. <laughs> Let me tell you something. I, I know you know. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. No, no. Um, I, I, I've known I've known Maurice for a while, but nobody could ever tell me one day I would marry him. My mom even laughed. She was like, nobody ever saw this coming. It's just funny. But um, when we started dating, I, I had really low self esteem. I had come out of a awful marriage. Mm -hmm. I, I, feel, I, I felt like everything was my fault. Mm -hmm. Um. <laughs> My mind kind of laughed at him because he had become a hermit, secluded. He didn't want to be around nobody. He just kind of came to himself and just kind of gave up on love and stuff. Mm -hmm. After his mom kept, get, get out, get out, date. No, mama don't want to date. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, coming back home to mama, wounded, battered, you know, just trying to start over. And he, you know, he was always my friend, but I never really, you know, paid him. You know, paid nobody <laughs> attention. You know, sometimes really we're always with somebody he knows. Um, 
But um, when I was at the lowest point of my life, you know, he was able. To, he came through and helped help me. Right. And um, and then one day he just told me how he felt, and I remember telling him, uh-uh. Yeah. <laughs> I, was, I said, uh-uh. I said, I know you like. I know you. That no. And he was just like, I know. I know you know me, but and she I know said God she didn't want to marry a pastor. I didn't want to marry a pastor. Yeah. My dad's a pastor. And I was like, I said, I want to marry a pastor. <laughs> Uh, well, uh, uh, anointed oh, one, anointed, anointed, anointed one, not just any one. I was in this crib that I was engaged to a, a deacon. <laughs> 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 being married to a pastor puts you on the front line. Well, yeah, you have, have to be. It takes a strong woman. I believe. I, I perceive it you to be a strong woman. <laughs> I perceive it. Right. But it does yeah. take. A, it takes a strong woman right. because I'm telling you, it really does right. put you on the front line and. And right. um, he's ever since I married my race, I've been challenged oh, yeah. in so he's many ways. Especially being a pastor. Oh my gosh, I've been woman in charge. Well, well, can yes. I can I, can I say what? I've been pushed because some people might oh she he pushed her. No, no, been, go ahead, finish that out. I've been pushed. No, 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 not physically pushed. But. No, 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 I've been pushed. I've been. No. <laughs> <laughs> what you say? I've been pushed. I've been, I've been pushed. Oh, I've been challenged to be what God always called me to be. Right. And unfortunately, in my first marriage, I was never pushed. I was always. Just and I was put in a position to be everything, unfortunately. So, but I was never pushed to be the woman that God has called me to be, which means sometimes going through pain. Right. And we we just taught our children recently in the devotion. We were sharing them how the Bible says, um, for the for the joy that was set before Him, mm -hmm. Jesus endured right. the cross. Right. And I never nobody ever pushed me to endure my cross so mm -hmm. I can reach my joy. Wow. And so. <laughs> This dude here, well, you know, this dude here, yeah, would we'll be like, you called it out. No, I'm not. I can't. Right. I don't know how to do that. That's so beautiful yeah, because so you get to lean on each yes, other. Yes, you know? but I didn't at first. I, I no, fought right. back. I fought back. <laughs> right. I was just, right. It made me uncomfortable. Yeah. The right. cost is uncomfortable. Right. And that's right. a great thing that you said that because there's a lot of women. Right. They have to get you know, to that but place you, first. Yeah, but check this out. Just like you, you want to, uh, uh, and a lot of women want a strong man. Yeah, I want a strong man that's going to, you know, he's going to help me. He's going to make me grow. I mean, help me grow. Mm -hmm. uh, he's going to be a, a, a man that's going to take care, provide, right. be able to hear it from God. Yeah. This, this, this. But the thing is, they really don't understand what they're right. talking about. You're asking you don't know what you're asking for. You don't know what you're asking for. You're like, oh, no, 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 now he's controlling. I know. Yeah, that's what I know. You're controlling. You're a bully. Yeah. You're always trying to make me do stuff. You're trying to make me do something. Yeah, I was using him. Yeah, and but at the end of it, you know what I'm saying? So that's why, you know, you got to be careful what you ask for. And if you do ask for a strong man, not a person, not a man that's going to beat on you, treat you bad. You know, he ain't getting the best out of you, just dominating you, and it ain't nothing good coming out of it. But a man. Right, like I said, a man, you. Get one, but you want one that is not going to mistreat you in those yeah. ways. It's going to respect you as well, like the yeah. Bible said. Yeah. Yeah. But ladies are supposed to, yeah. you know, be yeah. subject to a husband, but yeah. the husband also supposed to respect. Yeah. So right. he wouldn't put his wife yeah. in a yeah. certain yeah. position yeah. that's uncomfortable yeah. or try to make her do something yeah. that you know. Yeah. Yeah. So. But ladies, you got to, you know, God has a lot of strong men out, and there's a lot of ladies beating them down. Right. Yeah. Really, and, and let's just be yeah. honest about it. Because they've been hurt. Yeah. And, then yeah. when they get a good one, they don't really know what to do with that. Yeah, yeah. You know? because because people come from different backgrounds. They right. were brought up differently. And, and I don't know if I can say this on the show, but there's all a, there's always a set of group of people that say, well, I'm going to marry another culture. Because yeah. they were just, it ain't right. the culture. It is how that person was raised. Because you right. can have another person in another culture that was raised in a, in a, in a hectic situation. Right. And it don't matter what color they is, right. you know, they're going to be, that's who they are. Right. So, you know, our main thing is, it's funny how you talk about the church is trying to, is, is coming in to minister to the culture so we can see the community change and then now it's not, I don't want to, you know, marry this you know, culture, this color, I want to marry this color. Right. And, and I think it's just, it's, it's right. So no matter who yeah. you marry, I no mean, matter. you got attitudes and people that are trying to hit on you, beat on you in every That's color, right. shape, yeah. size, you know, yeah. <laughs> you know, it That's really right. doesn't matter. But, um, wow, I commend you guys. Thank it's you. awesome. We also got, we got a couple of things I want to show them to us. <laughs> I wish you had the Cowboys in there. Yeah. But this is a book, uh, Maurice Brailsford, uh, Story of Forgiveness, How to Love Your Spouse's Lover. And I'll put it in the video as well. And I give the link to the website so you can go and purchase the book. 
Awesome. Funny book. Funny, funny book, y'all. It's, it's funny. So that's what makes it so unique. Yeah. And this is Lisa's um, current album. Current album. Reality. Okay. Call Reality. It's available now on iTunes. Yeah, you can tell me where they can go. Um, definitely um, go to iTunes and get this album here. Um, the, um, it's a ladies album. My, one of my favorite songs in the album is called Pause. If I can put the world on pause. If I can put the world on pause. Aww. And that's my song for mamas. Wow. Sometimes you want to put them kids in remote on pause. <laughs> so that's what that song is about. It's a blessing. Okay. And, and this is Rockstar. And these are gifts for me, you guys. This too. Yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah, she'll be giving I'm them. going to listen to this as I drive back two Tell hours to finish it. About you. <laughs> put your name in lights. Make you bigger than myself. I come focus, focus on up. my life. You're my rock star. Hey. 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 And guess what, you guys? We bought the B twins. <laughs> Bam! I got me a set. <laughs> that is my new line by Lisa Bros for my, my married name is Bros for. Um, definitely, definitely. Uh, if you're interested um, in my earrings, please go to, what's the best place to go? Um, probably the best place to go is our website together um, is www.b-enterprise for bros for b-enterprise.com and you can see both of us in action and what we're doing for the kingdom. And you can also click on that link and it'll take you to um, my jewelry. You can buy the book and everything from there at Amazon as well. These are beautifully made. Lisa Brails for And you can also go to my website, lisamcleanandmusic.com. And also let me know where your church is located too. So uh, church, I'm some people don't. Yeah, she's on the oh. She don't know. She don't have them. Uh, yeah. <laughs> she don't have them. Hey, not on camera. Not on camera. They're going to be old. They're going to be folded yeah. at the end. Not on camera, girl. Like the custom with the iron because they're fabric. Wow. Uh, but the name awesome. of my ministry is called the Life Center here in Charlotte at 810 Tybola Road, Suite 134. Um, you can also visit our church's website at www.thelifecenter.com. Right. Right. The Center.com. That's right. Um, but we're here the Life in Charlotte. NC. You sure? Yeah. The Life Center NC .com. That's the um, That's the website. Okay. The Life Center NC .com. And um, uh, we're here on the south side of Charlotte, okay. North Carolina. A family church. Our motto here is you're just like family. Amen. Everybody who comes here, we want to make sure you feel like family, which means sometimes. You know, you might, and then they speak to me, then you go hug their neck. Cool. We, just, we just want to hug everybody, love one everybody. Right. We really, we're really big on kids here. Um, we're really big on empowering our youth. We have Girls Life is actually under the umbrella of this ministry. Right. Uh, we get ready to raise up our little brothers, which is our young men. Right. Um, and we also have an outreach ministry called Mission Life, where we feed the community. Um, and we, we just have a lot of things. We try to be an outreach ministry. That's, that's our heart, to be an outreach ministry. To get beyond these four walls, um, ultimately, just I, I, I'd rather have not have any walls to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. so, okay. And what is some encouragement would you give to um, our young men and um, and to any newcomers in Christ as well, well especially we, couples? Yeah, we we, t we teach love, um, and that's one of the series we on now. But love, teach accountability. Uh, we have what forty nine percent right now, men, fifty percent men at this time. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and, okay. and men love coming here, men, men, uh, that loves God, loves getting in the community. Um, I just try to be an example. They say I love my wife, um, and, you know, it makes Amen. them want to do it. Uh, the single guys, I tell them, the daughters of the ministry, don't mess up. You have to, you know, I'll, I'll come after you right. um, <laughs> no, and, right. and things <laughs> like that. But we teach accountability, okay. and I think that people like accountability. Okay. And there's a lot of miracles happening here at the church. Well, once again, I'd like to thank you for taking the time to come on my show. Thank you know, you. you get some people that get in certain positions and in life or careers, and they think that they're too good, not understanding that in order for them to continue going on, they still need somebody to go to their show, That's to go right. to their oh, event, okay. to purchase their, right. you know, That's things. Right. You know, so it's like, mm, yeah. okay, I, I don't get it. Well, you have to forgive them. <laughs> you have to forgive them. <laughs> of course, I do. I'm, I'm Michelle.
I love you guys. You know, I, I'm a single parent, and my, my daughter's father, my daughter is eight, and he left. He hasn't seen her since she was two and a half. And even though I really don't want to have anything to do with him, but I still forgive him. That's like right. if he, he came out of nowhere and he needed some water, or whatever, I will give it. And some people think you have to be buddy buddy in yeah. order to say that you love and forgive someone. You, you, you don't have to, you know. But just show him love. Yeah. That's right. That's all you you, you you are accountable for, is showing love. That's right. That's right. Exactly. So, before we get out, I would like for you to sing the song, which is what drew me to you, Lisa. A snippet, right? A snippet. Okay. Um, <laughs> um, the song was called You Are Holy. You are holy. Yes. <laughs> I was, uh, I can tell you what I was doing, but I was listening to Pandora. <laughs> <laughs> And um, I heard that song and it just brought tears to my eyes. Gotcha, gotcha. So just a little bit. Uh, you are holy, oh, so holy. You are holy, oh, so holy. What a privilege and an honor to worship at your throne. To be called into your presence as your own. Now the camera straight. Get it together, girl. Get it together. But anyway, good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. And remember to let's talk about it. Yes, yeah, right. <laughs> Uh, another, uh, another Lisa McClendon, Dave Stevens, Soul Joint, Wow. If I could put the world on pause